My name is Imka, welcome back to Random Universe. Today I am ranking all of the episodes of Hell of a Boss so far based on their rewatchability for me. And I want to focus on the episodes as a whole, not whether or not one scene in it was so perfect that it elevates the entire episode for me, or which ones I like to talk about the most in terms of lore, just straight up what is a fun episode to me in particular and why. Hit that subscribe button, and if we hit 10,000 subs, we'll make a fun little Imka animated video. Leave suggestions for what we should animate Imp Cut doing in the comments down below, cause if we don't get any good ideas, he'll probably just be Caramel Dancing. Now, going from my least favorite to favorite, my absolute least favorite episode of Hell of a Boss, number 15, is Season 2, Episode 5, Unhappy Campers. Now, the choices they made with Moxie in this episode were absolutely hilarious. I don't remember ever laughing so hard at any other episode, but I also don't remember cringing so hard either. And that's okay, I've also watched the entire series The Office and laughed and cringed at that, but I can't watch The Office again, and likewise, this episode is really hard to watch for the same reasons. Moxie being shown to be unhinged in his neediness is a very realistic portrayal of honestly, everyone who has ever lived across all space and time. It's actually scary how real Moxie's betrayal is while also presenting it in such an absurd way. Co-writer Brandon Rogers, known as the voice of Blitz within the show, is well known for writing characters in his personal projects that humorously display the narcissistic parts of all personality types that we try to dress up and make seem less selfish than they are, especially in media. It's the difference between seeing Moxie as a well-meaning imp who lost his mother at a young age and is helped by a woman filling a similar role now, and seeing Moxie as a sociopath who never grew past being a child and now milks his partner for all the energy he can to make himself feel special. By the end of the episode, Moxie and Millie address their issues and make peace, but because of just how intense Moxie's deconstruction was, it's very hard to rewatch, even if it's very fun to dissect and comment on. And it was actually one of the most fun episodes I got to make response videos to without focusing on lore. Number 14 on this list is episode 1 of season 1, Murder Family. This episode has always had a mixed place with me because it's just so similar to the pilot. I remember when this episode came out, I didn't really have much to say on it, with episode 2 and onward having just piles and piles of things to discuss, and that's also okay. Episode 1, at the end of the day, was an attempt to remake the pilot as they started the series proper, with the only real new detail in it being that Stolas and Blitz had made their new monthly arrangement. It was just another glimpse at what the supposed premise of the show was before ditching it almost entirely to focus more so on the exploration of rings. This isn't to say that we never see an episode focused on a mission to Earth, and they can even be some of the most enjoyable, but most future episodes on Earth will use the setting more so to explore some something really interesting, such as angels coming down to Earth as well, or a mission with succubus in the background at the beach, or even a fight with government agents who are tracking the demons. It's rarely ever just coming up to Earth to kill someone, and that being just that. For a while, this episode was actually pretty high on my list of rewatch value, but I watched the lore-based episodes and clips so much that it became sort of a safe and comfy place to just experience an actual episode within the world without a huge focus on the world building and esoteric puzzle solving. But because of that, I watched it so many times that the key appeal to me at this point is just Martha. Oh, and... My mama's a hero! She is a hero! That was funny, too. Thirteenth on the list going up towards my favorite is Season 2, Episode 4, Western Energy. This episode introduced a lot of cool stuff. We got to see Andreofis, we got to go to the Sloth Ring, we explored some caves between Pride and Wrath, but this is an episode I haven't come back to just for the fun of it. It is not a chore to sit through, however, and in addition to the lore stuff, the fight scene with Eminem and Stryker, and the amazing dramatic scene at the end with Stolas being rushed off to the hospital, it's still an episode you just can't forget that tugs at your heartstrings and makes you really nervous about where these subplots are all going. Twelfth on this list is Season 1, Episode 4, Cherub. This episode used to be one of my favorites overall, which is a testament to how consistently awesome the show has been, as well as to how quickly my choices change based on my mood. I could honestly rewrite this video later in the day and have an entirely different order, but this episode was most fun to me because it managed to deliver on its original premise, hanging out on Earth, while still doing what I ultimately preferred, which is exploring anything other than Earth, with the cherubs coming down and interacting with the imps. 
While this episode ranks low on my list of favorites to go back and watch, the entire thing is a clusterfuck of subplot that I do love, with the hilarious battle between the imps and cherubs being one of my favorite bits to go back and look at. And the potential it sets up for a sequel episode involving the cherubs is what I love most about it. As I can't wait to see these little babies come back with alcohol addiction or something after being kicked out of heaven and trying to cope on Earth. 11th on this list moving upwards is Season 1, Episode 3, Spring Broken. This episode is pretty consistently fun from start to finish, no matter how many times you've seen it. But it doesn't have any particular strength, and it's lower on this list because of that. It was yet another fun way to bring more lore while on Earth, having Blitz and the gang in a competition against his succubus ex for a parking spot. It made no sense why all these targets would be at the beach for that day, or why Veroska would be performing for a number of them, but it was funny, Vacation to Bone Town is fun, the sea monster thrown in just for the lore of Beelzejuice was cool, Luna got her backstory, Luna got some drama, and seriously, it was just a fun episode from start to finish, being the same kind of fun from the very beginning to the very end. Number 10, Season 2, Episode 3, X's and O's. This episode isn't exactly new at this point, but it's fresh enough that all of the story still really hits hard when you watch it. From the beginning, we get an amazing visual lore dump of the Greed Ring, giving us so much to unpack about the imps there, how they are farmed by the Lone Sharks, the pollution of the ring, so much so fast that you could make hours worth of documentaries on the implications of it. And that was only like 10 seconds of the episode. With the rest, we learn so much more about Greed than we could from within Lululand, which itself is shown in this episode to be just as destroyed as the rest of the Greed Ring, though Blitz can't be blamed for all of that. It taught us that Lululand was a tourist-specific theme park, and that people within the Greed Ring could hardly afford to go there. It showed that the Greed Ring itself is a trap, and it can lure you in with something beautiful, but that the rest of the ring is still just a wasteland where imps are born to make money for other people. The darkness of this episode runs even deeper when we learn that Moxie's father seemingly had his mother killed. Chaz is not my favorite character to be honest, but that's okay because the episode even ends with him being killed off, and the seed sown for Moxie's father Crimson to become a villain who goes after Moxie, which is one of my favorite subplots I'm looking forward to panning out. Number 9 on this list is actually a two-parter, which are episodes 6 and 7 of season 2. Both these recent episodes feature Fizzarale essentially as its main character, with Blitz taking a supporting role in them. I love Fizzarale's character, and having the dramatic revelations of Blitz's past with Fizz to set up Fizz walking away from Mammon in the next episode was really cool, and both feature top tier scenes in the series, with there also being just lots of cool greed ring lore spread throughout, like freaking dinosaur demons in the background. But what stops this from getting higher on the list for me in particular is just that I'm not a big musical guy, and this is filled with musical numbers. When I love a song in a musical or a musical overall, I can love it a lot, but it's so hit or miss with me because I'm musically illiterate. I will legit loop 30 seconds of some obscure instrumental I like for hours at a time because I have no concept of what good music is. These episodes are very music heavy, and for the most part, I just don't fall into the demographic of musical numbers as a whole, with very few really resonating with me in the series. It's clear to me that the music is good, and obviously the ones I love help make some of these episodes the absolute top of the list, but I don't want people thinking I'm hating on any of the music just because I don't get it especially considering a lot of the music is very layered references to genres and tropes within musicals, which again is just something I'm not very knowledgeable of. Number 8, Season 2, Episode 2, Seeing Stars. This episode is one of my favorites because it actually takes place in my neighborhood, Hollywood, California. This episode is fun to rewatch because I get to see my neighborhood and the jokes about it. For this episode, I even made a video with my buddy where we went around and got video of the real life locations that they visited in the show. Link in the pinned comment down below if you guys haven't seen it yet. On top of that, I personally enjoyed seeing Blitz and Stolas acting awkward together instead of immediately trying to address their fallout from the previous two episodes, and even without the context of Season 1 Episode 8, which had to be delayed until some time after this episode, the scene of Luna appreciating Blitz and teaching Octavia to appreciate Stolas makes this an easy rewatch with its beautiful animation and backgrounds. Number 7, at just about the middle here, is Episode 7 of Season 1, Aussies. It's hard to forget the first time we met a real deadly sin in hell, and this was quite the introduction. I complained earlier about not being big on musical numbers, but I also said the ones I do like tend to stick with me, and Ozzy's song in this episode is hypnotizing to watch between its music and the cool blue visuals. 
The Lust Ring has become one of the secondary locations we see more often in Hell, and its blue color scheme is just very easy on the eyes, with the rainy atmosphere just adding to the comfiness of it all. This episode has dramatic character moments, the return of Fizz, and an amazing little music number by Veroska, which is a good example of a 30 second piece that I've had on loop just because I like how that part of the song goes. This episode is something that doesn't just have rewatch value, but that you can watch twice in a row before bed, once to enjoy, and once to fall asleep to. Number 6, Season 1, Episode 6, Dorks. This episode doesn't explore a ring of hell or give us much in the way of lore, but has a lot of rewatch value because of the insane animation and amazing story. If Happy Campers is hard for me to rewatch because of how they portray Moxie, then this episode is sort of the opposite, where I want to watch it again and again to see the more sympathetic portrayal of him. Moxie being someone who is trying to live up to the expectations before him, but who doesn't feel like he's being taken very seriously. Blitz, meanwhile, addresses that while also working through his own trauma with Stolas and his past relationships. Even as someone who doesn't like musical stuff, the Moxie Phantom of the Opera scene is still fun to watch just for how cool the animation and style is, so there's something here for everyone. It had all of this and still delayed itself a few extra weeks so that they could add in this banger battle scene, which still ends with the demonic form of Stolas, with this episode being just a diverse example of how this animation team can do just about anything that it wants to. Number 5, The Pilot. The Pilot is an easy choice for my top 5 episodes. It was such an amazing intro to the world while also being hella confusing because of the way it played with the flashbacks. This threw me and some others off trying to understand what happened and when and in what order so early on, but it was absolutely fun to watch and see all the different flashes and I honestly wish more episodes were structured in the same way. There is so much that could be done using a flashback formula with comedy to combine different locations into a cohesive episode. I'm also a big fan of Stolas in the pilot. I like him in this series proper, too. Both are great. I just liked how much more intense he seemed here, and hearing about how he was originally going to be a bit more villainy and antagonistic, I'm very curious about how that kind of Stolas would have panned out. Number 4, Lululand. This episode has a special place in my heart because of the through line with Stolas and Octavia. Stolas has been a favorite of mine in the show because of how much he actually reminds me of a psychic I used to work for before jumping onto YouTube. Stolas' whole plot about having to decode the future using the stars and yet being the immense father figure to Octavia really resonated with me, and as much as I love the pilot version of Stolas, this version of him really makes me cry, and I still listen to You Will Be Okay with regularity pretty much every day. Number 3, Harvest Moon. This episode was fun because it was our first full look at another Ring of Hell. This episode introduced us to Wrath as a place where people actually live and exist, not just go to for a trip or on vacation. It introduced us to Stryker, who even with his recent episodes feels a bit underused since then. But you just know we're gonna get a great payoff to the story when he gets frustrated and finally does something like kidnap Octavia. This episode also really had fun with Stolas and Blitz's dynamic, making them seem great together in the beginning, but ultimately having Blitz question where he stands with Stolas, setting up the later falling apart at the end of episode 7. Number 2, Season 1, Episode 8, Queen Bee. Vivzibop claimed that this episode could be delayed without the plot of Season 2 being affected by it, and while this was technically true, this episode really adds a layer of depth I think people were wanting out of the early Season 2 episodes. By the time this episode aired, we saw the scenes of Luna before she was adopted, stuck at a pound with other hellhounds in Season 2, and while that hit hard on its own, it hits four times as hard going back and seeing this episode and understanding Luna and Blitz's relationship. Aired out of order, it found a lot of strength in its introduction of Beelzebub, who might have been a little too cool to release right after Osmodius, with the delay giving fans a chance to enjoy some more typical episodes before meeting another deadly sin. The music in this episode was great, as was the animation, and Beelzebub's portrayal was top-notch. This episode is easy to watch again and again because it's like going to a party, but you still get the emotional payoff at the end with Blitz and Luna that makes the rest of Season 2 just feel even better. Finally, my absolute favorite episode of Hell of a Boss, at least for now, is Season 2's premiere. This episode was probably the most intense of the entire series to a lot of people, and while some people hated the backstory that was delivered here, I absolutely loved it. Stolas's fixation with Blitz made a lot more sense after this episode, and seeing Stolas address that and make plans to grow beyond it and let Blitz go was heartbreaking. 
This episode had history, it had lore, it had a new royal in the form of Paimon, the only thing I don't think this episode had was a trip to another ring, and yet it doesn't even need it. This episode expertly set the stage for season 2, foreshadowing the inevitable circus accident flashback and sowing the seeds of the Barbie Wire subplot, which I have to imagine will be more important as the story goes on. The final music sequence in this episode was absolutely beautiful, and seeing Stola stop Stella from slapping him was better than any battle. But that's just my opinion, and if you sat through the whole thing, you might as well tell me it's wrong. Tell me what the true episode ranking is in the comments down below, and if you want more rankings, check out my video ranking the 7 deadly sins of hell, link in the pinned comment down below. See you guys next time.